I think, like I, think I think for you, what you know, and what my mentor used to say to me is like, you know, because obviously, you know, there's there's East Coast cats actors, yeah. and there's West Coast, right. and there's a whole different barrier between the two. Where like East Coast New York style of actor, you know, we want to learn the storyline, we want to learn the script, we want to understand the character that we're playing. Mm -hmm. Where West Coast is like. Just get me out of here. Give me the script. Let me read my lines. Let me get my check and right. move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And I think for you, what I've always said to certain actors is that, in my mentor, is me, is like, real actors, they feel. They don't read. They feel. They listen and they feel because it's if it's if it's not believable to themselves, it's going to portray on camera. Mm -hmm. And what I love about your approach to Justin is. And this is where it's going to be a second question for you is, is it's so authentic like your mannerisms in real life how he speaks how he talks how he's calm and and he, and he never like i even when he's angry or upset justin so he's so calm and cool under that pressure where he can he can say his what he needs to say and not have to raise his voice. Mm -hmm. And what I love the dynamic between, I think maybe this was in your thought process, you can tell me if I'm wrong, is that it brings the dynamic between Dollar Bill and Justin, almost like a ghost in Tommy mm -hmm. on power because you've got Tommy who's like Dollar Bill, explosive, right. always loud, always angry. All, and right. then you've got ghost who's serious about his business he's calm he's cool collective just in sort of the same way word of it, it also shows when he makes the points of saying you know what like i've been the guy holding it down i've been the guy doing the dirty work because every time bill deals with emotion he makes mistakes yeah he does things that cost the company cost his family but where justin has been his cleanup man you need someone, like when the dead body is in the trunk, yeah, to put the rubber gloves on and say, okay, I got you, just go away. I got this hand. Got this. You know, yeah. and, and, and so for you, like, was that your approach initially when you took the role? Or like, you, like you, you have that in mind saying, I want to play this as close to the best, or did it evolve over time for you? It kind of evolved over time because I didn't know what I was going to get myself into with Don Diamond. I, you know, I knew he was a vet, and that just made me nervous in and of itself because he'd been in the game for so long. So I don't know if he's going to be arrogant. I don't know if he's going he's gonna to be an a-hole. I don't know if he's going to be, you know, just, you know, let me do what I do and, you know, keep your distance. I didn't know how he was going to be. So mm -hmm. my thing was like, let me see what the playing field evolves, how it evolves, and what does it consist of. So we're in this big sandbox. How much water are they going to give him to make a sandcastle, and how much water are they going to give me to make a sandcastle? Oh, okay, they're giving them way much more water than me. So I got to make a sandcastle out of these couple little droplets, all right? And so now you pick and choose your choices. If emotion is high, logic is low, and then vice versa. So yeah. if you're going to be explosive, then I'm just going to let you look like that explosive fool, and I'm just going to hit you with the logic. So now you, get, at the very least, have the yin and the yang of the scene, yeah. you understand? As opposed to now me, because we both have an uh, alpha male type of personality. He has an A-type personality. I have an A-type personality. Yo, I think I'm Batman. He thinks he's Batman. So at some point, we could both be Batman. <laughs> so, you know be so I was like, yo, I, I'm going to have to be Robin. Okay, cool. I get it. I understand my position. And I'm going to play my position to the best of my ability until they're ready to release the Robin movie. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long that's going to take, though. Mm -hmm. So now I got to pump my brakes and not look at things internally, emotionally. Man, it had this. It's hard when you come in with so many storylines and then they hand them off to other people. Mm -hmm. and you see them being portrayed. Mm -hmm. You're like, that was part of my character storyline. Mm -hmm. All the way up until Don, I mean, Bill and Eric going over to Y&R. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's supposed to be going over to Y&R. I'm the one related to Drusilla and them. Where the hell they come from? Mm -hmm. But I get that you only have so much story and so many characters to give juicy stuff to. And they mm -hmm. feel Justin's plate when he came in. 
I had mm-hmm. the son, I had the wife, I ended up with a grandkid, I was related over to one. I had everything. Mm-hmm. It was really big plans in store for this this character that I was going to portray. But then it's so, pulled away. Yeah, it just kind of folded away. It kind of went away. And then I had to make a choice. Do I ride this out? Or do I just say, man, the hell with it, I'm, I'm cool. I ain't going to be nobody sounding board, you know, little mm-hmm. chauffeur guy. I'm cool with opening the doors every five minutes for this cat. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As opposed, And then I said, well, wait a minute. I could easily be in acting class or I could be on television acting mm-hmm. in, in class. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make this work and I'm going to make the best out of this relationship. I'm going to take these quote unquote lemons and I'm going to make lemonade. And mm-hmm. I remember... Uh, it was this one producer here, just a uh, uh, director as of late. She was asking me, like, how I'm glad that you have this and everything's working out. And kind of like, how did you manage to, to, to make it this far, considering all that you were going to be and it didn't happen? I would have been bitter. I would have been angry. I would have been in a bad attitude. I said, well, first of all, I don't think that would have worked for a black dude coming to a white show. <laughs> bro, <Bruh, it, it, laughs> okay, you heard it. That ain't going to work out, bro. Mm-hmm. If you want to keep getting your check, you better act like you got some sense, first and foremost. Second of all, I said, well, it would probably be better for me to, to stay in for the long haul and try to change things from the inside out, regardless mm-hmm. of what y'all think you may know about either myself or actors of color and the reason that you maybe haven't had as many on your show. I'm going to show you a positive light of that. I'm going to be mm-hmm. on time. I'm going to know my lines, and I'm going to deliver. And I would rather get that paycheck for maybe the minimal amount of work that you're giving me and, and continue to build on that. She's mm-hmm. like, man, that's really good for you because I probably would have screwed that up. And I was like, well, I didn't think it was it was bigger than me. Mm-hmm. I needed to be there to, in order to be that image on that particular show that you know is an all-white show that, hey, at least there's one person there that's trying to make a difference and trying to do his best to live up, to uplift that image. So mm-hmm. it became like a struggle within myself to show up and not feel invisible because mm-hmm. sometimes I will feel invisible. I'm mm-hmm. the only one on set. I walk through and say, what's up? And nobody says nothing. Says nothing. You got your picture on the wall at CBS, but bruh, you feel like nobody sometimes. And that oh, yeah. would crush. Yeah. You know, and I had to get them to understand eventually, like, it, little things. Like, well, why? They gave me a dressing room, but the dressing room didn't have a bathroom. And I tried to explain to them, like, you hear this, and you think, how are he pulling? How can someone pull the race car off for a dressing room in the bathroom? I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, so let's take it back. If we take it back and take it back and take it back, then it will go, oh, that makes sense. So Mm -hmm. I have a restroom without a bathroom. Okay, so if I come to the set and I come to get my makeup done, is there any person of color there to do my makeup? No. No. Is there any person there of color to do my hair? No. No. So that means I got to cut my own hair, which means I need my own bathroom to cut my own Mm -hmm. hair. Well, and first and form, right <laughs> now, you, you can see, hey, bro, I got silver, okay? You know what I'm saying? Uh, get, like, get, you get, want get, Justin get, to have black hair? Well, guess what? I got to dye that sucker because there ain't no, mm-hmm. there's no one in the dressing room to dye it for me, to cut it mm-hmm. for me. Now, hence, you say you grant me that that latitude and you get a hairdresser, but I don't know the hairdresser. Mm-hmm. They make and cut the hell out of some black hair, but Dude, even can cut my hair. Man. I know my hair better than they know my hair. Mm -hmm. So it still leaves me to doing it myself. So Mm -hmm. we don't want to go back to screaming racism, screaming X, Y, and Z. Why don't you have any black representation in the makeup room, in the hair room? See what I'm saying? All I'm asking is a dressing room with a bathroom, bro. In the hierarchs, we don't even have that representation, bro. And me and Christoph used to have those conversations all the time. And it's what you said before where it's like, you know, when you look at over the be- uh, since the beginning of time in our industry, where as you said, you know, if they let us all in, we'll take over. And and yeah. and and you look at you know whether it be from Bill Cosby or to Michael Jordan or to you know to uh, Michael Jackson. Every time we're in something of prominence, something good, where you've worked your ass off, it's all been tarnished by some sort of scandal yeah. that's either created. Or, or 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 put in a position where it's like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. like why is it so hard for you to understand we've got to not only work harder than anybody to make it, but when we make it, be like congratulate us the same way, put us in the same conversation. And I think for you, 
you know, this is where I'm going to ask you, like, with those things that you have faced, as you said, as Aaron Spears, which are no different to me in retrospect into the storyline of Justin Barber, where he's doing all this dirty work for Dollar Bill. Yeah. And he's watching the ladder continue to keep growing that he's put his blood, his sweat, his energy in exactly. and, 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 and and you're seeing, you know, the opportunities being passed up. And and yes, you can you can play that as you say, Jukin and Jivin, yes sir, boss, right. all that stuff. But then you look at it where you're thinking to yourself, okay, in my real life. Mm -hmm. This shit no different because here you are where and it's it's the same thing that me and Christoph used to talk about all the time, where you know the Barber family, the Drusilla Winters family, was prominent because it was the it, it was it, what you look at it, they were like the Cosby Show and Family Matters for daytime, right? Because you had <laughs> you know where. Dr. Huxville was a doctor, prominent role. Then you've got Neil playing this executive businessman. You coming in playing this executive lawyer, not playing the Uncle Tom, but playing mm -hmm. a prominent guy. But then they give him the family. They build these amazing storylines over the years. The African-American that makes up almost 70 to 80% of the viewership of soaps. Mm -hmm. And then you systematically dissect one at a time in, 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 in this medium where, it, again, in daytime, where it could have opened up, as you said, playing. Because I didn't, I didn't know until, until you said this now, until I realized, like, Barbara, I'm like, wait a minute, that was Rasul's last name. Yeah. And that's where I'm like, okay, that would have been an amazing oh dynamic God. to build yeah. on where you've got two shows, yeah. sister shows, Two dominant black families. Yeah. But what I didn't like, and this is where, for example, and maybe I want to get here, it's, it's no disrespect to her because she's beautiful, amazing, talented. Jennifer Veris is absolutely incredible. But where you look at the dynamic where you've got one show prominently building a black family, mm -hmm. black, black kids, black this, black that, black business. And then you've got on the other show, okay, well, let's mix it up. Let's put them with a white girl. Because mm -hmm. that's because, you know, this is what, and I guess you would say, and, and I want your opinion on this. Yeah. The show called Bold and the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. But as black women, they're the most disrespected, the most hated, the most vilified in our industry and in life. And it's almost like saying to a certain degree, because I've, I've never formally seen it, you know, really on the show where you have not, and they've been some very beautiful, fair skin, complexion like yours, mm -hmm. black mm -hmm. women, but mm -hmm. never an actual dark skin, Viola Davis type right. black woman on that show and to me, it's almost setting a precedence. And, and again, I want your opinion. Is that where it's like, why couldn't they put Justin with a person of color mm -hmm. and build that dynamic, even if it was a light-skinned girl, but build yeah. that dynamic mm -hmm. of like, okay, we've got a Black family and Black families, even though, yes, the stereotypes the the stuff that's put out that were broken and were dysfunctional right. and there's and we have different baby daddies and mamas <laughs> did you have any you know i guess you would say feeling towards that when they made that choice choice not to i mean with a black woman i kind of knew what it was going to be mm -hmm. because you can only uh make bridges connecting things that you know and or understand Okay. So if I'm the element that is the quote unquote unknown, and then you're going to pair it with a known, so then there's some level of understanding or control 
or in their minds, I'm thinking, storyline 